the GPU market over the next few months is going to look very different. I know a lot of folks have had a fairly glooming stance with the underwhelming offerings we got previously, but this time it looks like we'll actually have something competitive and good value products to choose from, so I'm quite excited. Both AMD and Intel are targeting the mainstream and mid-range segments, which dominate the market in terms of sales. Let's discuss that in this video. Hey, if you enjoy content like this, drop a like, make sure to subscribe, and smash that bell so you never miss another video. Hey, what is going on guys? Danny here. Welcome back to the channel and I hope you've all been doing well. I think if you're a PC gamer and or a hardware enthusiast, these next few months are going to get quite exciting. Recently on the channel, we talked about some rumors surrounding Intel's ARC Battlemate GPUs and they did recently officially unveil them. So we'll be discussing that and I'll be giving you guys my thoughts on what I think. Along with that, we also have AMD who are gearing up to release their next generation RX 8000 GPUs based on RDNA 4. So starting with the former, we know that AMD will have a strong presence at CES next year, which will be held during the first week of January. Their press event, according to AMD's GM Jack Hewen, will take place on January 6th, 11 a.m. Pacific, and the company will be sharing next-gen products across various segments of their business like HPC AI, commercial solutions, and also gaming. When it comes to gaming, I expect they will be showing a few things, such as their Ryzen 9 9950X 3D and 9900X 3D CPUs, and along with that, we'll see next-generation RDNA 4 GPUs. Then we'll probably see some software-related stuff, such as new features on their driver packages, collabs with specific game studios, and more. Now, it's unclear which SKUs AMD is going to be releasing. We know that for RDNA 4, AMD had cancelled their plans to release high-end and enthusiast cards to refocus their department and claw back market share. And they'll do this by going after those lower-end, mid-range, and mainstream segments, which is where the vast majority of the PC gaming community resides in. This is evident if you look at the top sellers list from major retailers like Amazon and also viewing recent Steam hardware surveys. GPUs from that mid $200 range to around $600 are selling well. What you'll also notice is that the landscape is mostly green with not too many AMD GPUs and no Intel GPUs in sight. So hopefully this is going to change in the near future. With the way both AMD and Intel are positioning their next generation of GPUs, they're hoping to change that and I for one am also hoping they succeed as fierce competition is the only way we drive the industry forward. Circling back to the AMD RX 8000 SKUs, we may have some clues based on various leaks and rumors suggesting which cards they'll release. We recently saw a user on Twitter respond to a video cards post, which also had some performance numbers, which we will be discussing, show a screenshot from Seasonic's website indicating an RX 8000 SKU and its power requirements. Now, I'm sure you all know who Seasonic is, a well-known and respectable power supply manufacturer, and on their site, they have a calculator which consumers can use to find out which power supply they should buy based on the system's overall wattage. In the calculator, a user can select which graphics card they have, and that calculator will give some information, such as how much power it uses and what kind of PCIe connector it uses. We see that they already have an RX 8800 XT in the list, and according to them, it will have a TDP of just 220 watts, and uses two 8-pin power connectors. Now, this could have just been a placeholder, or it could have actually been legitimate. We won't know for sure until the card is out, but what is peculiar is that they have removed it now from their calculator. But if we are starting to see this kind of stuff from a major power supply manufacturer's website, then I think it's fairly all right to say that the cards are on the horizon. What further corroborates with this is that there was a recent update from AMD's Rockam libraries that referenced the upcoming RDNA 4-based GPUs. Rockam is an open software for stack including drivers, developmental tools, and APIs that enable GPU programming from low-level kernel to end-user applications. It's basically a competitor to NVIDIA's CUDA software stack that's been dominating the professional and HPC industry. So in this patch, you can see that there are two GPUs referenced, and these are the RX 8800 GFX 1201 and RX 8600 GFX 1200. We've known for a while now that there will be two RDNA 4 GPUs, Navi 44, which is a smaller die, and that's what the RX 8600 should be based on, and then Navi 48, which is the larger die, and that's what the RX 8800 XT will be based on. We've also seen AMD cut down their SKUs, which yields another product. So from Navi 48 and 44, we should see an RX 8700 XT and 8600 non-XT, respectively. Maybe it's going to be called an RX 8500, I'm not sure. But this does line up well with the information we got from Seasonic's website and info we've gotten in the past for which RDNA 4 GPUs we should see. There wasn't any information within the patches that reveal specifications, but video cards are speculating that the RX 8800 XT 
will have 4096 cores with 16 gigabytes of G6 memory running at 20 gigabits per second on a 256 bit bus. And the RX 8700 XT, which will be the cut down card at 3584 cores and will have 16 gigabytes of G6, though a bit slower at 18 gigabits per second on a 256 bit bus. When it comes to performance, We've seen some very ambitious claims from users on the Chipel forums, but honestly, I'm here for the hype. Just bear in mind, we've seen these cycles with past generations, and there's been some catastrophic derailments, which I'm hoping isn't the case this time around. RDNA 4 is supposed to basically be a RDNA 3.5, if anything. It was supposed to fix a lot of the problems that lay dormant within RDNA 3. Anyways, a user by the name of Zhang Zong Hao is stating that AIBs will begin mass production of the cards in mid-December, although there are still some bugs. He mentions that the power consumption of the GPU is 7900 XTX minus 25%. So if you look at the official TDP, that's about 266 watts, which is a bit higher than what the Seasonic leak suggested. But this could be a mix up of TGP or total board power. But I presume that the 8800 XT should be between 225 to 280 watts, considering it has two 8 pin power connectors. And that makes sense. He emphasizes that ray tracing is an immense improvement, 45%, which is huge. The 7900 XTX's performance when it comes to ray tracing wasn't atrocious, but when compared to its direct competitor, the RTX 4080, it was like a whole tier or two tiers behind in some instances. So ray tracing is definitely an area where AMD needed to make some drastic leaps in. And if this user's claims are accurate, it looks like they have. Remember, AMD has worked with Sony and their RT engine to improve ray tracing performance. So we'll see the merits of that implemented here with RDNA 4. And then they say that raster ray tracing performance is comparable to a 4080, which is kind of a confusing statement. Personally, given some of the limited data that we've seen on specs, I don't think it's 4080 performance. It might be more like 4070 Ti or 4070 Ti Super performance, which is still really solid. And if they can get that performance at that $500 mark, then AMD will have a winner on their hands. Considering the leaked specs of the RTX 5070, I'm having a hard time believing that this card will even offer 4080 performance. Considering many in the industry are speculating that there will be a price increase, this gives AMD an open opportunity to strike and claw back some market share. But again, we've seen AMD blow some golden opportunities, and I wouldn't be shocked at this point if they decide to blow it again. When it comes to the smaller Navi 44 GPU or the RX 8600 XT, a leaker from the Weibo forums suggested that we'll be seeing this GPU trading blows with an RTX 4060 Ti in synthetic benchmarks at least. So there's a good sign there. And in the same post, they also talk about Intel's ARC B580 and B570 GPUs in that same tier. So speaking of ARC GPUs, let's move on to our next subject. Intel earlier this week officially announced their B580 and B570 graphics cards based on their latest Battle Mage architecture. There was quite a bit of information they shared. I recommend just watching their full video if you want to get the full insight. And I'm sure most of you have already seen it by now. So I'm not going to be spending too much time here because I would rather just wait for third party independent benchmarks to see how it stacks up against the competition. The other thing is that given how badly Intel fumbled the launch of the Arc A series with the atrocious drivers leading to performance that was just all over the place, they will need to have a smoother launch for the B series. And it's, you know, that's yet to be seen. There were two models announced, the B580 and B570, and specifications lined up with what we talked about in our previous video. Both cards are looking like they're offering some compelling specs for the segment. The power requirements are also looking quite good as well. 190 watts for B580 and 150 watts for the B570. What I really liked though was Intel's reference design. It's a minimalist design but looks very clean and it's also got a very sleek look and it looks like the card is just a two slot card, not some gargantuan monster. So you can you should be able to put this inside any case. They also showed a slide comparing the card against their last generation A750 and claim it's about 24% faster on average at 1440p across the titles and settings they used. Now using Tech Power Up's GPU database, 24% faster would put it in line with GPUs like the RTX 3060 Ti and RX 6700 XT, so not quite the RTX 2080 Ti performance some were speculating. However, at just $250, I still think it offers some compelling value to gamers, considering the alternative options that were mentioned are selling for $300 plus. 
So if Intel can deliver solid and stable drivers, they will attract a lot of gamers to this model. Now, when it comes to the Arc Beast 570, they're launching this at $220. And honestly, at this price, it doesn't look nearly as good as the B580 because clearly this is an upsell strategy at play here. It's blatant, but hey, we've seen Nvidia do it and AMD do this as well. I think eventually we will see this card drop down to $200 or $189, and at that price point, it will look much better. Intel also have ramped up their software stack, bringing ZSS2 to the table, which offers an improved upscaler, frame generation for their GPUs, along with ZLL, which is their low latency software. And that's great because, you know, having a good software stack to go along with their hardware is crucial these days and these features are becoming more and more important as games become more and more demanding with ray tracing and larger textures and these days many gamers are utilizing upskilling along with frame generation to help alleviate poor performance especially because we've seen a slop of unoptimized garbage these days and what's also cool is that since they're offering these new software features it does make it a better option than those other alternatives i was talking about because those cards are from what 2020 2021 so they're not even offering those same features or support those same features that intel's offering you here and yeah you're gonna get continued driver support so if there's cheaper it's the same performance if not slightly better and you get these software features i think it's a no-brainer the other thing i was really happy to see and something i do want to follow up on from my last video is that these cards will be using pcie 4.0 in our last video i talked about some rumors stating how these cards would be using pcie 5.0 leading to compatibility issues and performance loss if you didn't have a pcie 5.0 motherboard well rest assured if you have pcie 4.0 which you know can be found on even entry-level boards these days you'll be covered so I'm quite excited to see the ARC B580 in action, and if all goes well, then the mainstream gamer will finally have a good bang for the buck option in the new GPU market. So yeah, like I said at the start of the video, these are some very exciting times. I'm actually quite happy that we've got Intel not you know, canceling their discrete GPU solutions and actually bringing some really competitive and compelling uh, options to the market. We've got AMD refocusing on their mid-range and mainstream market and hopefully they're not just going to be copying nvidia so this is great because i think it's going to finally create a competitive market or competitive environment for the gpu space that we've just been lacking so so much over these last like four or five years Alrighty, guys so that's going to be wrapping it up for this one and we'll be touching base in the next video if you guys found this video to be informative and entertaining then leave a like let me know your thoughts and comments down below be sure to check out the video description for cool links and ways to support the channel, such as using my Amazon affiliate link. And if you're interested in seeing more content like this, then consider subscribing, I'd greatly appreciate it. Thank you guys so much for watching, take care and I'll see you in the next one.